<laughs> Hello and welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amorgwe. Many thanks for joining us again. I am Taya Salam. Of course, it was going to be all about when he will sign and okay. not if he will sign. Fair Obama enough. Young signed a new deal with Arsenal, so he's going to remain in the club to become a legend. And of course, ah. remember the rest of his career, according oh. to him. I'm not the one saying it, but he says he wants to be a legend in the club. And the only way he can do that is mm. to try and finish his career there and also win more trophies yeah, perhaps, for the uh, team. So uh, Arsenal fans, uh, you can relax a bit now. Your captain is going nowhere. Uh, he signed a new deal until 2023. Okay. Also on the show this time around, we're going to Rome, the Italian masses, where uh, former world number one, three-time major winner, Stan Vavinka, is out of the competition in the very first round. Who did he lose to, Cecilia? Italian to teenager. 18-year-old Mossetti. Mossetti. <laughs> okay, now that's the no thing that, that just doesn't ring a bell. Come on, Stan. <laughs> What okay. is going on? And, and the first set was just six love. Okay. Oh, dear. All right. Also on the program. Yes, of course. I know someone right here is not smiling this no. morning. But I'm more smiling simply because the Devil Nuggets, they did it again. And the historic team, for the first time they are in the finals oh, uh, since they lost gosh. Lakers in 2008 and 2009 season. Now for the Devil Nuggets, they just took out the Clippers, the Slippery Clippers, out of the way. And right now, they will be facing the Los Angeles Lakers. Wow. Remember, this team was actually the number third seed. Mm. So, like, they're a good team. They're like, a no good one side. gave them anything. They're a good all. side. A good side. The likes of Tyre Wells yeah, is already me. looking forward to having Kawhi Leonard and, and LeBron, LeBron James in the Western Conference Finals. But hey, you have to dream again so, next so, year. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Okay, so, silly, I know. I've spent uh, the whole of the year preparing. Uh, for Lakers, uh, Clippers, Western Conference Finals. Yeah. Only for the uh, Nuggets to uh, run on a parade. Uh, so no your 50-year wait continues. Continues. Yeah, well, not my 50-year <laughs> wait because I'm not the Lakers, Clippers, the Clippers fans. fans 50 -year I'm not a Clippers continues. fan. Um, yeah, very disappointing. Uh, you'd say for uh, the LA Clippers, piercing away a 3-1 series lead. That's the main issue right there. Let's give you a confirmation of the result. Game 7, Game 7 usually... Uh, very competitive, goes down to the wire, uh, tough to separate the both sides. Uh, but look at that, Cecilia is so lopsided. Yes, lopsided. Yeah, to at the 89. beginning, yeah, it was in the first, uh, first quarter by two points, not yeah. get to a lead. In the second quarter, of course, Clippers trying to come in at the point and not oh. get to a down by 12 points. But somewhere oh, in the God. third quarter, 10 minutes, you know, towards the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, I mean, the, the, the Nuggets woke up. Usually, that's the time they, they wake up. I mean, you look at it, okay, the first quarter, you know, series. the way they start, I'm like, okay, I mean, this is the Nuggets team. They're ready to fight. But somehow, in the second quarter, we didn't really see much of it. And then the final one, the third and the final quarter, hmm. I mean, just second, more like a second half team, you would say. But they yeah. won by 15 points. Wow. I mean, this is a team that was trailing at a point by 12 points. Exactly. But somehow, they, they won another one. I mean, it was a shocker for everyone, becoming the first team in NBA history yeah. to overcome a 3-1 deficit to win twice. a series twice in the same postseason. Yeah. They tried it last season. But then, the, against Portland Trailblazers, right, they couldn't, you know, make the game seven and getting into the next round. But this time around, they had to rally past, you know, the Clippers, mm. number two seed oh. in the West. Oh. Uh, so the LA, <laughs> yeah, I know you're LA pain. Chokers, that's what I'm calling them on the, on the show uh, this morning. And um, oh, just look at the smile. I mean, yeah, uh, Malone, is your Nikola birthday, Jokic, I mean. Jamal, Jamal Murray. Murray. 40 points on the night. Jokic, uh, a triple-double, which is mm -hmm. uh, quite customary. Uh, for the best uh, center uh, in the NBA, 22 rebounds. It's ridiculous. I mean, who has, who has uh, done that? NBA history, right? Uh, the record, 22 plus record. rebounds. I mean, it's uh, a record. From, yeah, 25 uh, Nicola, years history. Jokic. And, um, yeah, what more can we say? We have to give um, all the credits uh, to Denver uh, because uh, they've shown uh, incredible uh, character, incredible spirit mm -hmm. uh, to come back down 3-1 <laughs> twice. And the same postseason. Usually, if you do that once, you run out yeah, of gas. Yeah, you can do By that the time again. You want to do it again. But this time around, they've shown yeah. they, they've not That's only right. come back from uh, the series deficit. They've also come back in actual games as well, to mm -hmm. where they were down by multiple digits. Uh, you know, multiple times. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a testament to the character, as a Obviously. testament to the uh, to the coaching uh, done by Michael Malone, Malone. as well. So, incidentally, it's, uh, it's a year <laughs> older. <laughs> so fantastic. Now, yeah. That the present uh, for uh, Mike uh, Malone and um, 
Okay. Their reward, of course, is they'll be taking on the LA Lakers uh, in the final of the Western Conference. We all thinking it was going to be Clippers and Lakers. Uh, everyone was looking forward to it. The whole of Hollywood, I was looking forward to that showdown. But no, it's going to be Denver Nuggets taking on the LA uh, Clippers. And I already mentioned the two stars of the show uh, for you. That's uh, Nikola Jokic and... Jamal Murray, 40 points on the night, 40 big points. Uh, a lot of them clutch uh, in the second half. So, uh, fantastic play from these uh, two guys. Uh, let's take a listen uh, now to the post-match uh, 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 reaction uh, coming from uh, the Denver Nuggets uh, coach, Michael Malone. Yeah. There you mm -hmm. go, Michael Malone is a very proud uh, of man this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, rallying his guys uh, to, uh, to come back from that historic uh, through one deficit and deserves all the credits it, it does, uh, and man, all it the does. praise coming mm -hmm. his way. He does, really, because on the ninth, we're having the likes of uh, Kawhi Leonard having 14 points on the ninth, mm -hmm. and his shooting was woeful. And Paul George also added to it. Uh, I mean, 14, <laughs> 6, and 6. This is Kawhi we're talking about. And before See, this yeah. game, I said if he doesn't shoot up to 35 points, 30 points, they're going to lose. That's I no mean, chance and, of that's it. and that's what really happened. And Paul George also added to his own, I mean, 10 points. Yeah. You're looking at the shooting and the parameters and everything. It was like there was a day they decided have, to just underperform. I mean, they crumbled. I have, I mean, Kawhi is uh, finally human. I mean, yeah. we all see Kawhi in this light of a robot who goes in there, gets the job done. But not today. Uh, six, 14 of point, 6 of 22. That is the field. woeful. Uh, coming from a two-time NBA champion, a player who is uh, renowned for uh, you know, playing very well in clutch moments. So we have today be our on the performers uh, segment. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. you no know, thanks to Kawhi and Paul George as Paul well George, too. Yeah. That's it's not gonna, he's not going to escape this. <laughs> <laughs> Only two of seven from the three point range. Paul not George, four of sixteen shooting from the field. I Ouch. mean, he made just two of his eleven attempts from behind the arc. <sighs> I mean, what is it, man? Okay. Anyways, uh, let's go and listen uh, to. Uh, their coach, uh, perhaps uh, he's got an explanation uh, for what happened last night. I'm talking about Doc Rivers of the LA Clippers. All right, there, Kawhi Leonard trying to explain uh, what happened. Uh, uh, what happened is that the much. Nuggets were just shooting yeah. and the Clippers were not shooting. Yeah, so? yeah. Doc Rivers as well, too. Yeah, he's really, disappointed. Uh, missed the chances mm. because 3-1 uh, up, you know, come I on. Mean, yeah, all he needed was just one game uh, exactly. to get to a franchise uh, you know, uh, you know, Just make first history. franchise, uh, you know, final, but they couldn't. Uh, they dropped the ball uh, big time, big time. Uh, so they're out of the competition. Let's talk about our top performers uh, from the Nuggets, of course. Nikola Jokic, what a player! Another one. I've been saying it since yeah. the start of the NBA that this is the best big man in the league, and once again, he proved it last night. 16 points, 22 rebounds. It's an assist. He's also very skilled, mm -hmm. big man as well. It's an incredible passing range uh, for, for, his, for size. his size. Yeah. All right, and Jamal Murray. Of course, he's the one. 40 points on the ninth, four rebounds and five assists. Mm. And when he's playing like this, he's unplayable. I mean, True. there was a time uh, you had a double double team. I mean, the Clippers team were trying to double team yeah. uh, your cage and forgetting that Jamal Murray, I mean, it's, it's gonna it's hurt you. It's gonna hurt you. It's and gonna that's hurt what you. He did because the third quarter already, uh, Jokic uh, has already completed his, his, triple, his double. triple double. Oh God! I mean, who does that? So see that. Let's uh, quickly move okay. on from this, guys. I'm so disappointed. Um, let's go on uh, to the Houston Conference Finals Game One. We'll come back to the top performer in that game for Miami Heat later on. But let's talk about the result first of all. Game One between the Celtics and the Miami Heat. Uh, surprise, surprise. No surprise, actually, because it was very competitive. Needed overtime to separate the two sides. At the end of the day, it was 117 to 114 in favor of Miami. And it was Nigeria's Bama Debayo with a yeah. game ceiling block to complete the victory uh, for Miami. I'm very happy, of course, I'm supporting Miami. Uh, for yeah. obvious uh, reasons. Yeah, because uh, of Bama Debayo, and of course, you also have Andre Jimmy, Godala. Andre Godala, Godala as well, Jimmy too, Butler. Enough, yeah. And Jimmy Butler, three points, uh, actually put the heat ahead. 12 seconds remaining. Yeah, and good. that was where Adebayo was like, okay. The this next possession. No time. Yeah. I mean, there's no, no chance for you to actually yeah, nail I that. Mean, that could have tied the game. It could have gone, it could have gone <laughs> really <laughs> south uh, right there. Uh, but uh, that's why you have uh, Bam, who was a very solid uh, defender with that. A uh, crucial block on Jason uh, Tatum to, prevail, uh, to preserve uh, the lead and, by extension, 
the win for Miami. Of course, Goran Dragic was the star of the show yeah. for them. We'll come to Goran uh, in a bit now. But for Bam Adebayo, 18 points on the mm -hmm. night. Jimmy Butler as well, too. 20 points mm -hmm. uh, for Jimmy Butler. Jay Crowder, 22 points. So this is a very, uh, this is a well-oiled uh, machine, mm -hmm. uh, Cecilia. And that's okay. why they've been almost unbeatable uh, and that's the in, okay. uh, in the <laughs> bubble. Uh, celebrations at the end there. You can see all the guys, of course. Uh, uh, Bama Dubai right in front and center. Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder. <laughs> all these guys very excited uh, to have gotten... Uh, at least game, game one. one Get it out of the way. The Boston Celtics. Yeah, and, um, Jason, I mean, spared us for he had 30 points, 14 rebounds, but was not enough. Mm -hmm. Marcus Smart also scored 26 points on the night. Mm -hmm. Still not enough because Bama Dubai had something to say about that. Yeah, all right then. So you already... Uh, I have an idea of our top performers yes. uh, <laughs> in this game. Um, yeah. Who's the first person that we go to? Okay, we'll start with uh, Goran. Let's Goran, do Goran yeah, first. Of course. Goran got some has, been, uh, has been an unsung hero in so this to competition. Speak. A lot of times it's very, very quiet in what is contributing. But Goran uh, Dragic, uh, 29. 29 points, seven rebounds, and four assists uh, on the night. And uh, Jason Tatum, of course, Cecilia mentioned uh, his name uh, on the losing side. Sorry. Though, 30 points, 14 rebounds, and five assists. Okay. Okay. Right, we need to go on a break. break. Yeah. yeah. When we come back, of course, there's still so much more to talk about in sport this morning. Welcome back. We're still watching sport this morning, and of course, we'll be talking about. Uh, so many issues concerning, you know, what players need to do to get ready for the new season. And the Nigerian Professional Football League, the MPFL, and LMC, Nigerian Football Federation, and even the Sports Ministry, and even the National Nigeria National League, they've talked about the fact that clubs need to ensure that their medical department is well equipped. If they don't have it, they may not be able to register for the new season. So you guys can talk to us on Twitter what you think you know, clubs really need to do to ensure that they have this. But we'll, we will be having a specialist in the studio to talk more about it, what is required from this club. He needs to explain to us, you know, you have healthy sportsmen. Sportsmen are naturally very healthy. And the yeah. next thing you hear is that the guy had a heart attack and, of oh. course, slum. Oh. Some, you know, survive and some die and all that. Despite the fact that medicals were carried out even before you know, they started the season. So we'll be having a Dr. Olufosho mm. or Odunokan to talk to us this morning about that. Of course, he's a medical doctor from Georgia and the U.S. to talk about this and, of course, what clubs really need to do to ensure that their players are really, really healthy before uh, the season starts. And even some that seem so healthy and somehow when during the game, you know, issues do happen. Good morning, doctor. It's good to have you join us this morning morning and thank you for having me thank you for joining us so let's just right. go straight to the first question now what is the standard cardiovascular medicals in sports so it's interesting that you ask the the cardiovascular examination uh, comprises of a history taken and physical examination as well as testing and the, for sportsmen the goal is to ensure that they are in prime condition to participate in sports, to identify potential risk factors that could put them at risk for participation. So a typical examination will start from taking a history and asking questions, things like, do you have chest pain or do you get short of breath when you exert yourself? Do you have heart pain? Um, palpitation. So does your heart race when you participate in exams? So questions like that identify sports people at risk. Also taking a, a family history. Is there a history of sudden death in the family? Has somebody passed out in their index family, say in uh, siblings, parents, Oh, okay. I think we've lost contact with the doctor. We'll try to uh, establish another yeah. contact, you know, with him. I mean, it's yeah. interesting. I mean, yeah, heart it rate, is. palpitation. I do have Yeah, I mean, he's, he, I imagine he's still, he's still building on to, uh, you know, uh, more comprehensive uh, analysis and, uh, you know, examination. Uh, because, like you said, it's, these guys are supposed to be in... Very tip, healthy, top, fit. Yeah. Fit young guys. Uh, they've done medicals uh, before the season started. 
uh, they do routine medicals. But then we have issues of our players slumping on the pitch, cardiac arrests, you know, situations, uh, things of that nature. And uh, Mark Vivian Fall are really ready to come to mind or I'm still haunted uh, by those the scenes. Uh, uh, by the image. Uh, yeah, um, Ugo Hugo as well too. Uh, you know, uh, you know, in England, yeah, and you just wonder why? Why is it? Is and it just, these are international major competitions. Exactly. They're not coming to Nigeria. The exactly. Recent cases we've had. Right. So we can come to that as well. So I'm just wondering, and uh, a lot of people are wondering why we still have this case, and that's what the doctor was uh, supposed to help, uh, help us uh, understand more uh, uh, on the show. We're trying to reconnect uh, with Doctor Olufunshaw uh, Odunoko, and hopefully. He can join us again. But Cecilia, it's very, very important, especially going into a new uh, season now where it seems the authorities uh, want to do things the right <laughs> the way. The proper way. I mean, it, the proper way. these things have been there, but clubs just overlook it. They exactly. don't even bother about it. They register new season. Players may not even have necessary medicals and all that. Business they as don't usual. have as usual. Yeah. And they just continue well, with it. Looks it. Like so that's, not like, the case. that's not the case. If you don't have this thing, I mean, nothing's going to happen. Still not very, very convinced. Uh, Cecilia, that's why I'm smiling <laughs> that they will follow through. Uh, with all of those things, but I'll be watching, of course, and uh, it's very important they do it uh, because it, it, was a, it was a terrible case uh, that could have been avoided of last course. season. Mm -hmm. uh, Chinime, Chinime, Chinime Martins, Martins, yeah, still go, so uh, fresh. I mean, that's where United uh, are playing. Yeah. yeah, so um, they cannot afford to uh, to play around uh, with all of these uh, very important uh, factors and. Um, and and we'll awareness see. also needs to be created. I mean, how this uh, prevention, the awareness, you know how incidents like this can be avoided because we know that some of these incidents can be avoided. He was trying to explain that when players have this history, you know, maybe palpitation, a family history and all that, then you know you just yeah, have to, yeah, like, that's, that's really why they have take the care. Have all, that. all the medical department, they have Every, doctors. Doctors that not, can. Not... Uh, okay, arcs, yeah, we need doctors, yeah, maybe proper ones, cardiologists and some other that doctors no, that you know. That, you know, that exactly. can be in the who medical can, team. We can probe, in, you know, these players and uh, perhaps uh, uh, find out uh, certain things uh, uh, that might be uh, like uh, like flags, red flags, and you notice mm. these things, and this guy might be susceptible and, you know, try and work on it. And uh, to be fair, uh, to um, it doesn't only really happen in Nigeria. No, it doesn't. Uh, because it, Kano yeah. Wanko as well, too, um, he's been playing professional football yeah. for ages and we found out he had a heart problem when he yeah. went to... So, uh, in Milan, and yeah. thankfully they were able to resolve that situation and come back and uh, play the very good Best uh, career. It. Okay, uh, we have uh, Dr. Lufunsh. Uh, okay. He's Lufusha, back. Yeah, yeah Lufunsh is back with us. He was trying to explain, you know, the standard cardiovascular medicals that, uh, you know, uh, athletes need to take part in, especially before, you know, season starts. Sorry for the breaking connection. I was saying that... A Standard physical examination yes. would comprise of history and exam, and then doing testing, uh, for example, an electrocardiogram to identify abnormal heart rhythms. Mm. An echocardiogram may um, identify abnormalities with the heart muscle as well as the valves which control the flow of blood. Um, and in addition, you could also have blood testing that would identify just general um, abnormalities in, um, in, in, say, for example, things like anemia, low blood counts, mm. and things like that. So that's generally what a standard exam should entail. Standard exam, and we know a lot of clubs uh, in Europe, uh, they actually do uh, these medicals. Uh, they do it they're very, very strict uh, with it. And um, granted, we don't get to see uh, a lot of uh, cardiovascular incidents, uh, you know, on a field of play, uh, for example. But there have been instances where uh, players uh, have slumped and uh, it's been fatal sometimes. Sometimes uh, they've been able to uh, resuscitate uh, them. So uh, why do we still have this, uh, you know, these uh, few cases of uh, uh, cardiovascular incidents? In general about 0.1% of the population will experience sudden cardiac death, which is death um, within an hour of onset of symptoms where the heart stops pump effectively. Okay. And, uh, so 
If you translate that to the Nigerian population, what that means is that 200,000 people in a year will experience um, sudden cardiac death. Right. Many of the um, events when they occur, because of our fatalistic approach to things, we say, well, his time is up, or maybe some juju or voodoo um, was responsible for that. But there are many reasons for that. When it happens in sportsmen, it um, gains a lot of attention, obviously, because it happens in high-profile settings. I remember as a child watching Samuel Kwaraji slump and eventually die during you know, an Olympic qualifier while millions watch on live TV. Um, so the re- survival rate of sudden cardiac death at, in the best of situations is about 10%. Now that those chances double when you have trained people or even lay people who are able to begin what you call cardiopulmonary resuscitation, even right. simple things like a chest only compression, as well as the availability of external defibrillators, what's called the AED machine. Those simple things, the use of compression only uh, CPR, that's chest compression, and defibrillation defibrillation with a AED, which essentially provides a shock to the heart to restart the heart when it stopped beating. Mm. Those two things can double the chances of survival. Right. And so we should definitely have um, AEDs in public places, particularly stadia, um, airport. Um, places like where people gather, mega churches uh, should right. definitely have this. And the public should be trained in what to do when somebody slumps and dies suddenly. The commencement of just chest compressions, like I said, can greatly increase the chances of uh, survival when that happens. Okay. Will you say that's really responsible for, for you say a player is in action, then suddenly the heart stops beating while the player is in action and then... It's long. There, there are multiple reasons uh, for sudden cardiac arrest. In the elderly, it's usually pre-existing um, cardiovascular conditions. It's important to, to note that sudden cardiac death can happen in all ages, but in the elderly people, um, older people, the commonest cause is a heart attack. So coronary when, when you disease. Sorry, when you say older people, what age are you looking at? Because we're trying to stick with the athletes now, you know, between 25... <laughs> 22, Correct. maybe 35, 40, yeah. Correct. Um, so in older people, it's a, it's commonly a heart attack. We're talking about people over the age of 50 in general, 50s to 60s. So what about young? It's for the category of younger people. In younger people, it's a different, um, different set of reasons. So commonest causes are inherited conditions of abnormal rhythms. So things like what you call a long QT syndrome. Essentially, if you want to, if you will, imagine the heart as a um, muscle about the size of your fist that stays in your heart. It has a pacemaker in one of the chambers that generates electrical rhythms through um, channels that then go down to the muscle in the heart chambers and command it to, to beat, to contract. And so when the heart contracts, it pumps the blood into the pipe that takes the blood to the rest of the body. So um, if you will, you can then divide those causes of sudden death into problems with the pacemaker and the rhythm, Mm. problems with the heart muscle, problems with the valves that control the flow of blood in and out. So if you take those things, those are the commonest causes. In younger people, particularly um, athletes, inherited conditions and inherited abnormalities of heart rhythm is a very common cause. Another cause is problems with the muscle. For athletes, there's a condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where the heart muscle is too thick. Mm. And the thicker the muscle is, the more it's likely to generate abnormal rhythms that can then um, lead to sudden death. Wow. Uh, conditions with the heart muscle, uh, a flabby heart. 
So the dilated cardiomyopathy, in that usually you see um, conditions like alcoholism um, could contribute to that. So dilated okay. cardiomyopathy, where the heart is big and flabby. You also have conditions where um, the heart is stiff. So you call those restrictive cardiomyopathies where the heart doesn't uh, expand well because of the position of abnormal substances in the heart muscle. So that covers conditions with the muscle. And then you can have problems with the valves. The valves can either be too thick or leaky. So when you say okay. congenital aortic meaning that um, a heart valve that's too tight or a heart valve that leaks too much. So those are the other problems. And then you have um, congenital heart conditions where, to, to use layman's terms, okay. they say people have a hole in their hearts. And that's abnormal communication between the chambers and the heart. And that will lead to abnormal um, okay. blood flow. So right. those are some of the conditions that um, could be responsible. You also can have what's called myocarditis, where you have inflammatory conditions or inflammation of the heart muscle. Typically, that follows um, a recent viral illness, so simple cold and things like that. And then it would lead to inflammation of the heart muscle. Okay. All and right. That, uh, all right, Dr. Uh, Lufosho Odinoka, I want to thank you so much for taking our time to actually explain uh, some of these things to us. And hopefully athletes and, of course, club owners will understand what it takes before you can really, you know, get players uh, on the field of play and also have the basic things you talk about that they need to have before they can start a season. Thank you so much for making our time to talk to us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you. You know the shoes you're fitting in right there. It's a very strange, very strange situation with Barcelona. Uh, Arthur, uh, King Arthur, couldn't wait to get out of that place, which is very strange for a young Brazilian player. A lot of Brazilians have come to that club and have done really well. So for him wanting to just get out, so it tells you uh, there's a bit of a toxicity uh, in that um, uh, Barcelona uh, environment at the moment. But Barcelona fans, um, you can tell us, uh, are you okay with uh, Pjanic signing? I know you're not a Barcelona fan, but... Oh, no, if you look at the profile of the player, it, uh, it, uh, it's, it's an okay fit. And it's just for that. Barcelona. What making 30 look like? Is, he going, is no. he going to play well under Coleman? Yeah, That's should the big play, question. Play well, yeah. I've That's got a Barcelona question. fan in this. Uh, and another thing is, when you're letting Luis Suarez leave, Arturo Vidal is also leaving. Now that, you're bringing in a 30-year-old. That's the rationale no, behind they, it all. They, 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 even if Suarez can't leave... Mm -hmm. they, um, he's not, what we're hearing is that he might just be asked to stay out of the team. That's yeah, to show you what Coleman yeah. wants no, to do. They can't even okay, afford to do that because Barca need to Why sell not? players to buy. So if nobody is say. willing to buy or if there are no Someone's, deals being agreed, then you stay. So why, why, why not? It will look like the Ozil case at Arsenal. Anyways, uh, before we look at the or papers... Or Bill. Before we, look at, great. Yeah. before we look at the papers, uh, okay. uh, let's take just one. We just have time for one tweet. Okay, uh, all unfortunately, because right. uh, Ogufor Abosu, yeah, we have your tweet, and uh, you're saying it's massive news uh, for the Gunners yesterday. The season would have been over before it started uh, if I imagine if they lost uh, Obama Young. So thank God he stayed. Okay. Uh, one of the How Arsenal fans. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Barcelona, yeah. All right, uh, let's take a look at the papers now. Barcelona is not settled, so he needs to stay at Arsenal yeah. for that. He's settled. <laughs> Sporting Sun, I'm starting with that one. Sakatov's Golden Boy Award shortlist. You also mm -hmm. have uh, Haaland is there. Uh, Jaden Sanchez is also there. Sufati is also there. Sporting, that's Sporting Sun. Sun. Yeah, that's where I'm talking from. This. And Iqbeba says, Ancelotti doesn't fancy it would be. Uh, Phoenix, yeah. Okay. Uh, Phoenix sets of con World Cup target for the Super Eagles. Let's start playing football first. Quick one on it will be uh, mm -hmm. Everton, Ancelotti, and all of that. And, um, personally, I feel it will be should um, look for a club before October 5. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. And I don't think he has any sort of space. True. Either. I in agree. that Everton inside as it's as it as is, is now. now. So. With reinforcement. And there is a follow up. Yeah. There's a follow up on Complete Sports right here. Complete Sports. The big story here is Everton open to it will be his offer. There you, you go. See? So, so, that so that's that. That settles forward. it, right? Said for so they want to let him go. But then I think it was coming oh, a little yeah, bit late. The move hasn't yeah. panned out well. I mean, at all. just one season Shame. and it's yeah. going. Okay, what also else? here you have a semi scores twice for Crotone. That's a battle ready for battle 
Uh, so, so we are yeah. ready for Serie A battle. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Online on set for Fulham debut. Okay. Carabao Cup tie against Ipswich tonight, right? Uh, is it pays the penalty on first plus <laughs> shirt? Okay. And this is meant, okay. Yeah, the Carabao lost, Cup. They are out of the Carabao Cup. Yeah. The lost in about 11 yeah. 10. Oh. Should oh. Oh. Yeah, that's cup competitions really, exactly. right? That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. And then we started. <coughs> Inter Milan is in contact with Cavani, Edisi Cavani. Okay. I don't understand okay, that one. Is Lukaku is scoring goals and he's going out of fashion. Mm -hmm. Lutaro Martinez is not going anywhere. anywhere. He's going to sign a new deal. So you know, because these players are coming on cheap, so some free and all that. So they can just they pad they them up and have Cavani, first yeah. team, second team and third team. Uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go to Sporting <laughs> Live. Let's talk about one. more exciting... <laughs> Oh, transfer news. Um, Tottenham may top United to sign Gareth mm -hmm. Bale. Tottenham fans have been uh, long suffering in the transfer window. Uh, but just yesterday night, it looks and it came out that Gareth Bale wants to go to mm -hmm. Tottenham. They're already talking about it. His agent wants to move. The two clubs want to move as well. There's also the left back as well to regular yeah. as well to who's uh, being linked out to Tottenham. How, how do you see these two deals? Uh, panning out uh, before um, the windows open. It will be good for Spurs, mm. especially for the, uh, from the Gareth Bale angle. Mm. Um, Spurs still lack that creative uh, player, you know, that could, or that creative playmaker. So, what did Gareth Bale mm. can't do that for them? Mm. Also, hear yeah, that uh, Dele Ali might just be a part of the deal. Nah, might just be a part yeah, of the it's deal. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Dele Ali better not go to Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to sit on the bench. Don't see it happening, but it'll be a great deal for Spurs if they, it, they can pull yeah, this off. Yeah, if, 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 I mean, Either United or Spurs, whoever gets this, especially Spurs, it would be a great it deal. Looks more like if Gary Bale comes back and um, you know just um, help them okay. fashion out yeah. a new part yeah. to their yeah, football. Spurs That's a good one. Spurs, Spurs are going for a player. Yeah. United, all the players they've been linked with from yeah. Sergio Regulo yeah. and uh, all of them. Uh, nothing just, is happening. Just leave United, uh, Thank you so much for coming yeah. on the program, Roti Miyakindeli. Thank you and um, shout your out time. to Clippers fans. Yeah, <laughs> Doc Miller should be gone, right? <laughs> Quickly, one word. Come on. Yes. We uh, need to go. You talk about that later. Thank you guys for watching. You took so much time. Cecilia. <laughs> Many thanks uh, for watching as well too. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I am Taya Salam. <laughs>